Taya Kyle is a New York Times bestselling author and the widow of American sniper Chris Kyle. Chris and his friend Chad Littlefield were cruelly murdered by a man they were trying to help. In Chris's honor, Taya has founded the Chris Kyle Frog Foundation, which focuses on strengthening the marriages of military spouses and first responders. After her husband's death, people shared their own stories of tragedy and triumph with Taya. She highlighted over 30 of them in her book, American Spirit. Taya Kyle joins us now. Welcome. It's so nice to have you with us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. You've called the American Spirit a love letter to the country. What do you mean by that, Taya? You know, I just think it, it's when you you see someone hurting or angry and you think there's more to them and you yes. try to reach their soul and get past the anger and I feel like that's where we are in this country. It's, it feels very divisive and polarized. And I, I see this country is still having a soul. And I think that's the healing process. We need to get to the soul. And remember that just because we hear loud extremes, that's not the majority of what's happening in this country. The majority of what's happening is people loving each other and lifting each other up without any knowledge of the other person's politics. Well, and sometimes, you know, that spirit can spread yes. <laughs> like wildfire. Yes. And we all need to like learn to take three deep breaths right think a little bit while we're doing that, and right. then come at it from a different perspective. You talk about the pioneering spirit that built America. And I mean, our country is really founded on that and great because of that. Right. Discuss that a little bit. Well, you know, it's interesting because I, I, I know a lot of times people get frustrated if we talk about the founding fathers. And there's, there's a mix of what they wanted, which was border control and currency, railroads. And, and that's about it, right? The, the federal government was designed to not do much. And I think that was brilliant there because it allowed people to help each other out. But, you know, aside from that, we had this spirit of helping one another get across the mountain passes. And, you know, if they were sick, you helped your neighbor. Who else was there, right? And the blessing was that people figured out the kind of grit they had. They figured out what it took and um, what the purpose was kind of in the pain when they came together. And I think that part of our spirit's alive and well. Well, and there is a, a, a big core of your book is about the fact that there is purpose in pain. Really? Yeah. That sometimes when you're going through it, as I'm sure you found yourself very difficult to see or even to hang on to. Right. How did you get to that place? Well, you know, it's interesting because I find that sometimes it feels impossible, right, when you're going through it. And I think the more perspective you have, the more experience you have getting through things, the more you start to see the, the beauty in it and you have faith that it's okay. Mm -hmm. So I definitely see the wisdom in God's plan, because I think it's sort of like if you knew your child was going to have an amputation, you would prepare them ahead of time yes. and then you would be with them there and you would take care of them afterward. And I see that as what God did with me. I was prepared in little bits before the amputation, the having, you know, Chris's life taken. Just jerked out of your Right. Life. And there, there are ways that I see he prepared me to be able to withstand that and put people in place to help me. But there's a story in here. If, can I take a minute Please, and tell you about uh -huh. this? There's a story in here that I, I really, I, I kind of had a moment where I felt God in the green room back there kind of talking, saying, talk about this one. Solutions for Change, I haven't talked about it on any of their show. But, you know, Chris Megason, his story is amazing. He starts out as a Marine who loses a volunteer contest, right? Now, you know, just little things add up. You think, oh, that's too bad. You, you know, you didn't get what you wanted. That puts him into a place where he had to volunteer. Where he volunteers, he sees a guy who has fought drug addiction and, you know, is uh, miserable and uh, death of loved ones. And he's hurting and he's in this homeless shelter and he doesn't talk to anybody. That pain is used for good, right? Yeah. So, so the two of them meet and then they connect and then that puts Chris on this different path where now he not only helps people, but he, he does the whole biblical thing of teaching a man to fish, fish. right? Mm -hmm. And the, the cool thing is the guy who's fought all these addictions and had all this trouble and is homeless, he doesn't want, I mean, he appreciates the fact that he has food and money, but he doesn't want just that, right? He wants his life back. He wants somebody to see him as a person. And so Chris goes and creates a, a two and a half year program for people. You know, there's a story in there of how it happens, but where people actually change their lives for the better. So I take that and I think one little thing at a time that we would see as horrible actually ended up being the most amazing blessing for all of these families who now have a totally different trajectory. Yeah, that wouldn't stuff. have happened had he gotten what right. he wanted in the first place. That's exactly it's right. It's a Romans 8, 28 yeah. moment. You know, God yeah. takes sometimes what the enemy has planned for you that's not good and turns it into something that's a blessing for many. I think he does that every time. We just have to be wise enough to see it and we have to be open enough 
and not have fear rule our lives. And, and sometimes my life has been a journey of turning fear into faith. I was very afraid of a lot of things. And the longer I live, I see if God can get me through the worst, he can get me through the littlest. And, and at one point I would have thought he wouldn't care about the little things. Yeah. And I think the beauty of this book and why I had to share the story is he does care about the little things. He like does. how magnificent is God that he can care about the little things in all of our lives? That is mind blowing. Speaking of caring about little things, how have you helped your children through all yeah. of this? You know, it's, it's fascinating to me too. That's another part of my learning experience with God is I see that people say kids are resilient, but what I see is their souls have been changed in a way that is positive. And that should not have happened, right? Because my biggest fear was telling my kids that their, their father had died. And then when I actually had to do it, it was one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. He was an amazing father. And then I look at it and see they are soulful, faithful, they're strong. They have a different perspective. You wanna talk about a bad day? I mean, I remember my daughter telling me at one point, Mama, sometimes I would have thought of this as a bad day, but you know, my dad didn't die today, so really. Yeah. You know, and it kind of took my breath away. Yeah, and I thought, sure. that's a lot for a little person. And, yeah. um, and she was very young at the time, and I just see them as um, so much smarter and stronger and, and more compassionate. And I was going to say smarter and stronger, yeah. and yet gentler in a way, more, more compassionate, as you said. They that's really amazing. are. They look out for other people, you know, and they don't sit in their grief. I think that's the other thing. You, you think at some point that when something like that is taken from them, I wondered, would their foundation ever be okay? And I've had other men in their lives who are strong, married Christian men who cared enough about our family to care for my children, right? Yeah, they've had people, yeah. yeah, they've had people step in every way. So without being married again, you always wonder, will my kids have a, an understanding of what mm -hmm. a healthy home looks like. And they do, because they have friends who have healthy marriages and homes, and they, they get it. And isn't that really the message of your book, that all around us, life is happening, yes. and we need to step in. We yes. need to step into the moment. We need to step up to the right. plate. We need to be the one. Right, and, and with that, I would suggest this to you, too, is that I remember thinking I'd hear those things, and I'd think, there's no way. I'm a mom. Like, I, there, I would love to change the world. I can't do that, right? And I think that the power in this book is you see that it's actually the small things you do, and it Every multiplies. Day yes, and, and just taking really good care of your kids and giving them that foundation ripples out more than any work you could do if you were showing up, you know, at a, even a nonprofit every day. Yeah, it's a great legacy, yeah. what you leave with your children. Well, the book is called American Spirit. It's available wherever books are sold. It's a wonderful read. It's a wonderful inspiration and encouragement. Thank you, Taya. It's Thank great you for having to me. see you again.